apparently, yeah, apparently, you have to start the broadcast in landscape if you want it to be landscape. Uh. Uh, well, that was embarrassing. Let's wait until people come back. So, my hand hit the little button on the side of my phone that displays all your open windows, and my uh, phone was not having that in terms of processing power, so that crashed the Facebook app, which then ended the live broadcast, because I am brilliant. Alright. Uh, so, hit share. Let's uh, try to get, when I see, when I have roughly the number I had, um... <laughs> the right number of people here, I will go over some of the oil safety tips and then we'll start frying. God damn it, I feel stupid. Ah, uh, I am dumb. All right. So, give that a minute. I'm just going to clean some stuff up while we uh, get the audience back. I apologize. <laughs> Right. So, this had raw shrimp in it, so you do not reuse it. It goes in the trash, yeah. This had raw shrimp in it, you do not reuse it. It goes in the trash. This had, is raw egg, and had raw shrimp, so it goes in the trash. Noticing a, uh, well, you can go down my sink, because it's egg. But, you know, you're noticing a trend there. You do not keep any of the stuff that you used to batter the shrimp under any circumstances. Unless you are going to do more shrimp in the next, like, hour, then you don't reuse it under any circumstances. All right. I'm also going to create an area... Using one of my racks, paper towel over it, because this is where the cooked shrimp are going to go to drain. Just cover that bad boy with some paper towel. All right, so let's try this again without all the failure. So, hot oil. Safety tips. One, do not touch the hot oil. Two, do not, under any circumstances, try to put water on hot oil. If you overheat the oil and it starts to smoke, turn off the heat, move the... If it is not on fire, safely move the pan off of the heat and step away from it until it cools down. In the event of an oil fire, in the event that oil spills, in the event that you overheated it and it catches on fire, under no circumstances under absolutely no circumstances are you to try to douse this fire with water water and oil literally don't mix they sit on top of each other the oil if you hit it with water while it's on fire will float on top of the water and you will have water that is on fire spreading everywhere the water will also instantly evaporate causing a geyser of steam which will spray the on file fire oil all over everything and that is how you burn your house down I'm not kidding how do you put out a fire that's in a pan Where the hell is the light? Ah, it's over here. By smothering it. You kill the heat, you turn off the burner, you hit it with the lid. It'll smother the fire and the fire will go out. The only other way to do it, Melissa said, baking soda. Okay? In the event, that you have a catastrophic failure of something, like, I don't know, you burn your hand, you accidentally drop a pot that's full of oil onto a burner, and the whole thing goes up in flames? Um, 
I'm not joking. Turn off the burner if you have the ability, but if not, get out of the kitchen, call 911. Do not try to fight an oil fire in your kitchen by yourself. If you feel you have lost control of the situation, call 911 and get the hell out. Okay? A new kitchen is not worth dying for. That said, this is actually a pretty safe process once you know those basics. So those are our emergency tips, just in case you've never done this before, but it's really not so bad. So, I've got my oil up to temperature. I've got my shrimp covered in coconut. I have tongs. And I have the lid in case I fuck up. Let's make some coconut shrimp. So we're going to do these in small batches. You don't want to crowd them in here. So I'm going to do these about four or five at a time. And they're going to go three to four minutes until golden brown. And I will demonstrate. You hear that? That's the sound of awesome. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna start my timer. There we go, three minutes. Okay. If done properly, it should look something like that. Okay. Now, like most, most things I'm going to tell you how to do, right? The secret now is don't really touch them. You're not going to, you're not going to move them around. You're not going to try to poke at them. You're really just going to let them do their thing. Okay? So we're going to let that three minutes go. And just keep an eye on the oil. If you've got an oil thermometer, again, you want it to be hovering around 350. And uh, if not, otherwise, just keep an eye so that they're doing their little bubbly thing. So we'll do these in batches of five. I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen left. So we'll do this in, uh, like, three more batches. Okay. So, yeah, now this is the, uh, the part where we just kind of sit and wait. Now, you're going to get... <coughs> You're gonna get loose coconut in your oil. That's okay, it's really not the end of the world. If it starts to build up in the oil and it starts to get in the way of things, you can strain it out with a slotted spoon uh, in between batches. Don't try to do it while you've got stuff in there because you'll just accidentally hit it and kind of mess everything up. Okay? Cool. All right. So, now, since we're in the, uh, that phase of everything where all we do is just let things do their thing, uh, does anybody have any questions? Oh, uh, this is the important part where my cooking drink is good to have. You know what? That is right, Meg. I'm going to do exactly that while people come up with questions for me to answer. Coconut shrimp is kind of a southern recipe. I think this calls for peach bourbon. Twelve seconds. Yep, we're gonna do a dipping sauce once I get all of these fried up.
Mm. Three minutes was actually a little long for these. These are a little well done. So we're going to go with two minutes on the next ones just to see how they're doing. These are looking a little well done. I'm going to cook. I'm going to cut through one while we drop the next batch in just to see um, where we're at. I'm also going to turn my oil down a little bit. We're looking for golden brown, and I think I may have. Uh, but we do want to make sure that the shrimp are cooked all the way through. So, so um, just give me a minute while I uh, make a slight adjustment on the fly to the cook time. Actually, let me cut through one of those. Let me see where we're at. Should be three to four minutes. It doesn't take long to deep fry shrimp. Yeah, that does look like it's cooked all the way through. And it does have a nice breading layer. So I'll show you the cross section of this guy. So there's our nice cooked coconut shrimp. You can see our shrimp is white all the way through. If there's any clear, it's not cooked all the way through. You'll also see we have a nice layer of breading all the way around. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, I think we're okay. I just want to make sure I'm not burning them. Yeah, golden black isn't quite the same. <laughs> so, turn our oil down a little bit. And let's go with uh, two minutes. See, see if they get cooked all the way through. Yeah, we're going to take a minute off of the cook time to see how that goes. That could have been a variance in the size of the shrimp. That could have been a variance in the oil might be a little hotter than, um, than the recipe calls for. Because I'm not using an oil thermometer. So there's going to be some trial and error at this phase. Don't be afraid to explore a little bit. The important part is that you do cook the shrimp all the way through. That's really the important part. I'm just going to take another one of the larger ones and cut it in half, see whether or not it's cooked all the way through. Oh yeah, no, that's definitely cooked all the way through. This is less exciting because we're just waiting for things to cook now. Yep. <coughs> and I did the flour and breadcrumbs together. You can do the breadcrumbs and the coconut together. It depends on how bready you want the outside of the coconut to be. You could do flour, egg, then coconut and breadcrumb as well. The, 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 the breadcrumbs can go with either the flour or the coconut depending on how bready you want them to be. Yeah, these look a little better. I think we're going to go with the two minutes. It's going to make sure that they're cooked all the way through. Best and worst experience with frying? Well, my worst experience with frying had nothing to do with the taste. 
my worst experience with frying was the the weekend at HQ that I thought I would be uh, I thought it would be cool to do southern deep fried breaded and fried chicken uh, as the entree at HQ for sixty people. Um, that was a fucking nightmare. Uh, I'm never ever doing. Never doing that again. Holy shit, that was a fucking disaster. It came out great, but it was so much fucking work. Like, I am never, ever... I was in front of the, that pot of oil for five straight hours. I am never doing that again. Like, holy shit, was that a mistake. So are you cooked? You do look cooked. You do look most pretty cooked. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with like two minutes, maybe even two and a half. See how these are a little bit more golden-y? Yeah, that's a bit, that's more of what we were going for. So first batch, a little on the well done side. Not actually bad though. What, eat? Okay, fine, I'll eat one. What, you think, like I don't think they're good? They're hot. I'm going to, I'm not going to burn myself. How do I know they're cooked through? Okay, good question. So, see how it's white all the way through? That's cooked all the way through. A raw shrimp is going to look clear or clear ish, kind of translucent. Cooked shrimp is white all the way through. All right, let's get the last of these done. Yep, they won't be shiny. They won't be shiny. They won't be see-through. They will be white and solid. I use panko because I use panko on everything. Doesn't matter. The recipe doesn't matter. You can use both, or either, I should say. Mmm, that came out really good. It's also crazy fucking hot though. Holy shit, it needs to cool down. Yeah, that's really hot. Holy crap. One more minute.
Okay, last batch. Once I get the last batch done, we'll bring them over here to cool and I'll show you how we're going to make our marmalade sauce. Which I forgot to tell you what the ingredients were that for at the beginning because I'm a jerk. So I'll do that right now. You're going to need sweet orange marmalade. Not the unsweetened kind, you want the sweetened kind for this. And if you've got it, dark rum. I keep dark rum in my kitchen almost exclusively for cooking. Okay, last batch. This is going to have six in it just so I can be done. Just enough space. All right. Clean up a little. Almost there, folks. Shameless plug to Dio and La for supplying me with the Peaks bourbon. Dio and La, some of my best friends in the whole wide world. Not just because they supply me with, with fresh Georgia peach bourbon, but because they're great people. And they ply me with bourbon. Yeah, so this is a prime example of what we were aiming for. Nice golden color. This was a minute too long. Yeah, these are probably... They tasted okay, but they're probably got like a burn taste to them, so we'll probably be chucking those. But this, great example. This is with two minutes. You're looking at two to three minutes, depending on your oil temp and the size of your shrimp. Almost there, folks. Did anyone else have any questions? We're almost to the cooking phase. What kind of phone? I, I use a Samsung Galaxy S6. And there we have it, folks. Coconut shrimp. Remember, when you're done with your oil, turn the heat off and just let it sit. It's going to need to cool down before you really try to uh, dispose of it. So we're going to go back to our friend, the measuring cup. I'm just going to, all he had is flour and breadcrumbs, so I don't really mind and I don't really feel the need to rinse it. We're just going to wipe it out. Cool. I used canola oil um, because it's a little bit lower in uh, such in saturated fat and otherwise um, the same as vegetable oil. It's also a little bit more forgiving if you hit it with too much heat. Uh, it's a little bit more forgiving because it's a slightly higher smoke point uh, than, than run of the mill soybean based vegetable oil. So as you can see, golden brown is what we wanted. That first batch was a learning curve. 
Um, apparently my oil was a little too hot. So that's why, hey, if you're working on something the first time, take it slow, do it in batches, and if you fuck up the first batch, who cares? No big deal. We still got all these delicious coconut shrimp here. Okay. So, let's set you up. That's not hot. There we go. Good. Stay. Good. No. Bad phone. Stay. Okay. And it's slowly sliding, isn't it? Yep. Bye. As the phone slowly slides away. We uh, find a better spot thing to prop you up against. There we go. That's better. All right. So, our dipping sauce. Coconut shrimp normally pairs with some sort of orange sweet sauce. That is the, the usual uh, side to coconut shrimp as an appetizer. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat up orange marmalade and we're going to thin it with dark rum. And I got just enough dark rum left in here to pull this off. So, measuring cup. We're going to take half a cup of orange marmalade. Little spatula is your friend. I have insufficient hands. Half a cup of orange marmalade. Here we go. Roughly, this is not, a, this one doesn't have to be an exact size, which is apparently half of the jar. So that's good to know. You take a sauce pot, put it on medium low, put in our marmalade, come on, get in there, good, And we're going to thin it till we get a consistency that we like. We're going to start with two tablespoons of dark rum and whisk on heat and see where we're at. If, if it's still too thick, add a bit more rum. So one. More rum. Quite possibly. We'll see. I guess we'll just leave that out then. I have my silicone whisk now. And just on fairly low heat, we're just going to whisk. Until thoroughly blended. This is only going to take about 10 to 20 seconds. This is not going to take long. Now, alcohol is a solvent, which means things, it dissolves things. Things dissolve in it. And what it's doing is the alcohol is adding the flavor of the dark rum, but the alcohol content is actually thinning up that gumminess that's in the marmalade and making it a bit more of a sauce. The heat is just a catalyst to make that go faster. Okay, I actually like the consistency of that. That looks pretty good. Let me show you guys. So you can see, that's about what we're looking for. That's it right there. Just nice. Not quite as thick as the marmalade once was. That's all we're looking for.
So I'm actually going to kill the heat on that. That's already done. Okay. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And everything in between, we have... Uh, made coconut shrimp and a marmalade sauce. Suggestions for substitution for the rum. Is it because you're breastfeeding and you can't have alcohol or because you just don't like dark rum? Because that will change what my suggestion is. I will await your response. Or, you know what? I'll just answer both. So, if you can't have alcohol... If that's the problem. Oh, you, oh no, you just don't like rum. <laughs> uh, okay, well, if you just don't like rum, uh, then the uh, a good substitute for something like this flavor-wise... You just want to thin it out a little bit. Uh, you could use, I mean, you could use water but you're going to want to do it on a higher heat so that you evaporate that water off. Um, that'll thin it out a bit and break it down a little without without getting, like, watery, as it were. Uh, uh, a decent brand of vodka would also work because high-quality vodka doesn't have too much of a flavor to it. So if you just don't like rum, but you don't mind spirits, um, a high-quality vodka will do the job. Um, you're not going to get that, you know the rum notes that this recipe is rel is using, but you'll you'll get the thinning effect. You'll absolutely get the thinning effect. Uh, yeah, that, I, I would try that. Um, I would probably, if you're going to use something like that, though, um, go with one tablespoon to start instead of two, um, because vodka is higher proof than dark rum, so you, I don't think you need as much, and you're not doing it for the flavor, so I don't think you need as much. I would go with one tablespoon whisk on the heat, and then... See if you're at the consistency you want before doing the second tablespoon. That would be my recommendation there. Yes, shrimp on the rim. Rum in a glass of shrimp on the rim. That is the, uh, one of the, um, I assume the rum is there for the molasses. Yes, you absolutely, yeah, it's, it's dark rum, so it's, it's the, it's the molasses note. You're absolutely, that, it's that flavor. It's that nice dark rum flavor. Uh, but you're not going to want to add molasses to marmalade, um, because then it'll be fucking paste, and you, 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 it's not a sauce. So, tequila would probably work. Tequila's going to add a very, very different flavor, though. Um, I'm not sure how the flavor of tequila meshes with, uh, with orange marmalade. Uh, I mean, tequila and orange does go together. I mean, that, that is, you know, like a tequila sunrise. Um, no, tequila and orange does go together. I mean, it is a flavor combination that some people like. Um, like, you know, like I said, like at the cocktail, a tequila sunrise, and orange juice and, and tequila with a couple other things, but, um, uh, you might, bourbon, I mean, basically you're just trying to thin it. So, I mean, we could sit here and I could go over the various things forever, but the, really the short version is you're using a little bit of alcohol to add a little bit of flavor and, um, from the type of alcohol and to, uh, but more as a thinning agent to make your sauce. Um, presentation, uh, if you have martini glasses, uh, these are traditionally, what you do is you take your shrimps and you clip them to the side of the martini glass and you do that around and you serve the sauce in the, um, you serve the sauce inside the martini glass and that's, so you pull off your little shrimp and you dip it. That's if you're being super fancy. Like, that's, that's like, like, my monocle needs a monocle fancy. <laughs> like, pinky fully extended. But that's, that's how you, that's how you put that together. Um, but I'm a, I'm, I am like low, I, I, I'm a doctor, but I am kind of low class doctor guy. So I'm going, even though I wear suits everywhere. All right, so maybe I'm not, but... Anyway, I'm just going to put these in, my, in the sauce and then in my face um, because it's dinner time. And so that's how I'm doing that. I am not doing fancy presentation. These are going in my face. This is my dinner. What other sauce would be good? Anything that you'll... Anything sweet. Um, or anything on the sweet side of the scale. This is an appetizer that is designed to play savory against sweet notes. Shrimp are savory. 
coconut and the sauce are sweet notes. So the sauce is an accompaniment sweet note to go with it. Anything in that category you could theoretically use. I do not recommend going with like cocktail sauce. This is not that kind of shrimp anymore. <laughs> I think you're wearing double mod. No, 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 no. Oh, well, no, 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 no. What I mean, no, yeah, I'm wearing two. Yeah, I get your glasses. No, um, my, that was just a joke about how ritzy, you know, the martini glass presentation can be. It's like your monocle has a monocle. It's, it's a Futurama joke. Like he says, uh, I don't think you understand how rich, and then he pulls out a monocle. Like, yeah. Most of my sense of humor is 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 pop culture references, because I am not original. Um, any other questions? I will take final questions before I uh, end the end of the session and put coconut shrimp in my face. If you have ramekins like these, you can. This is a an appropriate way to serve the sauce, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, theoretically, this recipe, for the record, uh, is supposed to serve two people, but uh, I have, uh, I'm indulging my inner fat kid, and I'm absolutely housing this by myself, because uh, I live alone, and that's happening. That's happening right now. I said what kind of phone I have. I have a Galaxy S6. show you guys a picture of our final product. Uh, and I could throw that half of a shrimp directly on the floor. I could do that. that that's, that's beneficial. Yeah. Uh, that should not stay there. Okay. Alright, and... There's the money shot right there, folks. Look at that bad boy. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Uh, I'm Bill, and this has been another one of my random... Uh... <coughs> this has been another one of my random weeknight cooking videos. I don't have a name for this show. I'm not trying to get YouTube famous. My production values are shit. I shoot this on a Galaxy S6. Um, but, uh, I will, of course, be uploading everything to my YouTube channel for, uh, archiving and reference, and if you ever have any questions about any of my recipes, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook. Um, I'm always here to help. Um, remember, cooking is not that hard. All you have to do is follow instructions. If you can handle being an adult and following instructions, you can handle cooking. Don't be intimidated by it. It's really not that scary. Oh. On a word, last note, on a word of price, all of this to do tonight costs 20 bucks. Um, it's, uh, the most expensive part of it is the shrimp. You're going to spend like 10 bucks on the shrimp. Uh, you know, I went with a pound of shrimp. It's about $10 a pound. Uh, so you're going to spend 10 bucks on the shrimp, and then you get store brand breadcrumbs, store brand coconut. Uh, you know, everything else is stuff that you might, you know, cook, you know, breadcrumbs are something that I would hope that you just have at home because you would get used to cooking. It's a useful thing to have. Same thing with the oil. But even if you have to pick those up, it's a dollar for the, for the thing, for the container of oil, you know, store, again, store brand, it's, you know, it's two dollars for the coconut, it's two dollars for the breadcrumbs. So you could do this whole thing for 20 bucks. Uh, so, all right, everyone, yeah. Have a good night. I'm going to go stuff my face with coconut shrimp. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Facebook, and this will be archived on YouTube for reference sake. Have a good night, everybody.